Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number, and in this week's Tableau video, I wanna cover how do you write calculated fields which would allow you to compare your fiscal quarter to date versus your prior fiscal quarter to date. And we'll do both the immediately preceding quarter as well as the same quarter from last year. We're gonna do kind of both varieties here, okay? So let me start by showing you our data. So uh, this data set I'm working with um, is currently starting in the middle of March, 2019 and then runs through what is currently today's date as I shoot this video, uh, March 10th, 2023. Um, this I'm gonna upload this workbook so you can access it later. I've set the dates up so that they move and update along with today's data. So the latest date should hopefully always be today. Uh, so it, it may look a little different by the time you access it, but the, the concepts will be the same, okay? So let's say that we work at a technology company whose fiscal quarter and fiscal year start in February, right? So there's a lot of companies like that, um, Tableau slash Salesforce being one of those, I think, uh, right? So February 1st is the start of our new year and our new quarter. So, so right now we'd be at sort of roughly the beginning, or sorry, I should say the middle rather, of fiscal year 2024 Q1, right? So if I wanted to compare to last year, I would say, you know, how is February 1st through March 10th doing against that same period last year? Or if I was comparing to the last quarter, let me do my mental math here. I think we'd be saying how is about the beginning of November doing to about mid-December. Okay, so hopefully we're, we're kind of following along so far. So first up, what I need to do is get rid of that calculation that I forgot. Um, okay, so I'm going to write a calculated field uh, to update our order date so that um, February 1st, 2023 effectively becomes January 1st, 2024, because it's the start of the fiscal year. Okay. So how does that work? So I'm going to create a calculated field. Uh, I'll call this order date and then I'll just put dash F Y. Okay. And so then what I'll say is date add and then parentheses month, all lowercase singular, single quotations. How many months do I want to add 11? To my order date field okay so if your you know if your year starts in a you know whatever maybe february 1st is not the start maybe it's july 1st right then you just probably want to add like five months or six months rather rather than 11. so you kind of got to tinker this for yourself right so what i'll do is i'll say okay and what i'm going to do is just so i can look at this side by side i'm going to right click and drag my order date fy side by side on my row shelf with my current order date and what I should see, which is perfect, is I wanna see February 1st, 2023 for my order date FY, that's showing up as January 1st, 2024. Okay, so now I'm gonna create another calculated field that's gonna end up being our kind of reference date, right? So for a lot of two date fields in Tableau, you use the today function to say like, how's month to date compared to last month to date? So we're gonna do the same thing here, but we're gonna call it today FY. So what that would do is I would say date add month 11 to the today function, okay? So today is March 10th, like I was saying. Um, so I, yeah, I'm already struggling to do the mental math here. So let me just kind of throw this on another worksheet. So by adding 11 months to today's date, that takes us to February 10th, 2024. Perfect, that would be the middle of Q1, 2024. So now I'm gonna write a calculated field that would just return us the sales for um, this fiscal quarter to date. Okay, so basically the beginning of February through the middle of March. So I'll hit the drop down, create a calculated field. I'm gonna call this sales um, current FQTD, fiscal quarter to date. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if the date diff between my quarter field or in, in quarters rather, I should say. So if the date difference in quarters between my order date FY and my today FY equals zero, then sales. So basically I'm saying, okay, well, you know, if today with 11 months added to it is in that quarter, then give us the sales values from that quarter. Okay, so let me do a new sheet here just for the sake of testing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my original order date again. I know it's getting a little confusing going back and forth, but I'm gonna use my original order date, just put month year of order date on my row shelf. And this is kind of what we'd hope to see, right? So I'm just seeing sales values for February and March. Okay, cool. 
So that, that's true. That is my current fiscal quarter to date. And that should be dynamic as well, right? In a couple months, it will be a new quarter. Okay. So now, how do I write a calculated field that would give me sales for, let's start with last quarter. So basically, I believe it would be start of November to mid-December. So another calculated field, and I'm going to call this sales um, prior fiscal quarter to date. Okay. And then this one, we're going to say this. We're going to say if the date diff in quarter, so quarter is my unit. So if the date diff between my order date FY and my today FY equals one, so basically it was one quarter ago, and then bear with me for this part. Here's kind of the, the real kind of woo, the big part, the fireworks. And order date FY is less than or equal to the date add quarter minus one of today, then sales end. So let's break this down. So what we're saying is if it was the last fiscal quarter, so not today's, not today's fiscal quarter, but, you know, rewind one, um, and the order date FY is less than or equal to, you know, so basically if you took three months off of today's date, um, uh, and, and then you kind of rewind from there. So let's see. So for our fiscal quarters, right, we're going beginning of uh, right now, current fiscal quarter, beginning of February to middle of March. So if you take today's date, March 10th, and you uh, rewind that three months, that would take you to December 10th, right? So that's effectively what we're saying is that that data needs to fall on December 10th or earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. I'm gonna double click on here and bingo, right? So we were seeing data for November and then a smaller value for December because presumably that's not all of December sales. Um, if we really wanna double check that, I could also double click on sales and see that fold out here. So the entirety of December 2022 sales is 89,000, but this is just returning 25,000. Awesome, that's, you know, I mean, we go down to the day level and confirm this, but I think we're probably in pretty good shape here, okay? Um, so we've got one more calculation we're gonna write, which is how do you, um, compared to the prior year or fiscal quarter to date, okay? Um, real quick though, before we do that, if you check out this info button in the top corner here uh, on YouTube, um, we have all kinds of classes that are coming up. We've got calculation classes, the basics of Tableau, Tableau prep, advanced calculations, all sorts of things. We run uh, multiple classes per month. We'd love to have you join for one of those. So, so feel free to check that out up here and we'll put a link in the description as well. Um, cool. Okay, so let's do our last calculation. I'm going to duplicate my sales prior fiscal quarter to date. And because the new calculation is actually very similar. So I'm going to just change this to sales prior year fiscal quarter to date. So now instead of saying is the difference in quarters one, we're going to say four. So go four quarters back. So now we're talking about, you know, whatever it would be like fiscal year 2023 Q1. And then we're gonna have to, we're gonna rewind four quarters off of today's date. So if I say, okay, here, that's it. So I just change those references. That becomes four, this becomes negative four. We say, okay. And now let's double click on our prior year and let's see what that looks like. So uh, it's giving us all of February, $100,000. And it's giving us part of March, right? The entirety of March, 2022 is 53,000. This is just giving us 25,000. Okay. So now to hash this all out, like let's say I want to create kind of an overall calculated field, which would say something like, oh, you know, how, how does, how has subcategory sales changed uh, from, you know, this quarter to last quarter? Um, what, what I would probably do is something like this. So I would say, you know, um, sales difference. Yeah fiscal quarter to date, and then maybe I'll say year over year so we know it's, uh, you know, comparing Q1 of this year to Q1 of last year. So what I would do is really important. You want to make sure you aggregate these values. So I would say, what is the sum of my uh, current fiscal quarter to date sales minus the sum of my prior year fiscal quarter to date sales? Okay. And this may or may not be necessary, but I like to do this as a safety. Um, I'm gonna add a ZN function around both of these as well. The reason that I would do that is, let's say that there's some specific category that you, know, you sold a bunch of last year, but you haven't sold any of this year. Um, you don't want the calculation to get messed up and say, oh, what's $1,000 minus null? And Tableau's like, 
No, I don't know. So it should just be $1,000 minus zero. Anywho, um, I'll drop a link below. We've got a video about the importance of aggregations and calculations, why it's important to do things like this. So, so I'll send that to you. Um, so first of all, was to see what is the overall sales difference from you know this quarter to date versus last year's fiscal quarter to date. Not good, right? We're down $11,000. So where is that happening? Let's throw our subcategories on here and find out. Do a little sort. So we've got some subcategories which seem to be on the up compared to the same time period uh, last year. So copiers and chairs, um, but we've got some some real big losers as well. Binders, machines, and tables that are, uh, are really dragging us down there. So yeah, that's just kind of sort of a quick over, overview and, and walkthrough of how you'd write that formula. So uh, thank you for checking this out. Hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, I'll drop a link to this workbook in the description. So if you wanna download this, pull it apart, make your own modifications. Um, then you can. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. We drop new videos like this every week. Uh, so we would encourage you to follow along to get to see things like this. So uh, thank you so much. And we look forward to catching you soon.